Olá, tudo bem? Começa mais um Léo Reis aqui de Nova York e seja bem-vindo ao Rica Castle. Hoje eu vou te levar para um evento seis estrelas da Academia Americana de Ciências da Hospitalidade. Nesse evento, eu entrevistei várias personalidades, artistas e autoridades. Dentre elas, o Dr. Paracon, ele que desenvolveu uma água de hidrogênio que em breve estará em todo o Brasil. Falei também com um artista chinês com pinturas fantásticas, um ator mexicano que está vindo aí com um filme sobre tráfico de crianças e também com o diretor geral do aeroporto JFK aqui de Nova York. Vamos para o evento? Let's go! Diamonds are forever. Agora eu estou aqui no jardim do Orrica Castle. Estou aqui me aprontando, aqui, me aquecendo para ir lá agora para receber as celebridades que vão chegar, enfim, os organizadores e as pessoas que vão participar desse evento. Let's go! Look, Joe, look, I talked I talk to Mr. Paragon, he was telling me about the water. Yeah, that, oh, the hydrogen water is going to blow everybody away. It's the greatest miracle water. It's saving people's lives. Joe, everybody's impressed. How can you get so many VIP together in this beautiful Just castle? Just do the right thing in life. Be kind and humble and congenial to everyone. And just say the best, the truth. That's all that matters. Joe Chinkri. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. They are all I need to please me. They can stimulate it. Now we're here with Dr. Nicholas Pericone. Nice meeting you, doctor. Nice to be here with you. I know that, you know, doctor, he, he very, very, very famous in Brazil. I know that you've done some work in Brazil, right? Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, Brazil, of course, has um, been uh, a very important place for me. Um, one of the things I wanted to do was work with the uh, Brazilian children uh, who, of course, uh, live in somewhat poverty, but uh, wanted to uh, break that cycle by um, Uh, help uh, build a school outside of São Paulo, and um, the children. And the school has grown uh, to 240 something students. There's also a small clinic associated with the school. Uh, but in addition, um, the uh, books I've written have been very popular um, in Brazil. Uh, the very first one actually was, I think, on the bestseller list for almost, almost over a year. What was the name of the book again? That was the Wrinkle Cure. The Wrinkle Cure, the Wrinkle Cure, right here, Wrinkle Cure. Brazilian women are very beautiful and they like to maintain their beauty, so they take a big interest in the science because it's science-based. Mm -hmm. um, I do a lot of research in that area. And um, of course, uh, now we are working on a new project and it's called Hydrogen Water. Interesting thing, you know, hydrogen's a gas and we always think of hydrogen going into big balloons, the dirigibles. Yeah. Because uh, it's the smallest molecule in the universe and very light, so it can make things lift if you put them in. But right. We found now that um, if we give it to, to people who are uh, want to stay well, if they want energy, or if they're sick, it has a lot of therapeutic capability. So the easiest way to give it, of course, is in water because it dissolves in the water like we dissolve sugar in a cup of tea. And when you drink that water, the hydrogen gets through the body in a matter of a couple of minutes. And it can get into the brain and give you more clear thinking, reduce inflammation, it's protective of heart disease. It tends to reverse uh, problems that could lead to diabetes. Wow. So we truly believe that if we can get the population and uh, drinking hydrogen water on a regular basis, we can decrease the health care costs significantly. And I want to get it to uh, Brazil because um, Brazilian people, of course, are very interested in, in, in their health. Uh, and um, pure water is, is important, but also if you have hydrogen-infused water, 
Uh, if you are an athlete, you can perform better, but if you're getting older, uh, it can be very, very protective of you. And Excuse me. They won't leave in the night. I've no fear that they... Well, now I'm here with Chow Chuen. Well, yeah. So you're here today at Pohika Castle, right? Yeah. Is it your first time here at this beautiful place? Yes, for me it's the first time, but I hear about this area uh, so many times. Yeah. And, and Joe Cinque is the one that uh, is bringing this party together. What can you tell me about the American Academy of Hospitality yeah. Sciences and the awards that he gives to five-star places? And this one looks like it's a six-star place. Yeah, it's a very good, uh, very good place. And uh, I met uh, Mr. S um, uh, Joseph uh, in my house, mm -hmm. and he invited me to this, this party. And uh, I'm uh, very happy and uh, very glad to have this opportunity here. Mm. Tell us a, a little bit about the art, yeah, my what, art you produce, yeah. what you produce in, in, in China, right, yeah. and all over the world. Yeah. Before I doing uh, Chinese painting in China, uh, when I, I was uh, 36 years old, I immigrated to New Zealand. Mm. And from New Zealand, I changed all my style. And 10 years later, I uh, immigrated again from New Zealand to New York. And uh, just a few months ago, I just finished an uh, exhibition in um, uh, McMurray Museum of uh, Boston College University. And the whole museum got my own exhibition for a month. They organized this, this exhibition uh, four and a half years. So for me, it's my uh, great honor. And uh, as it, that exhibition is the first artist still alive in the world doing that expression in that university. So for me, it's my great honor. They won't leave in the night. I've no fear that they might desert me. Diamonds are forever. OK, now I'm here with Dave Schuttenhofer. Yep, That was it. good enough? Yep. All right, Dave. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about the Trump National. OK. Uh, Trump National Golf Club is located in uh, Bedminster, New Jersey. Um, it, it, we have about 500 members, and um, it's over 600 acres in central Jersey in the old farm country. Um, our club is uh, a private club, um, and it is uh, the club of Donald Trump. It is uh, the club where uh, the president comes and recreates. Um, he's been uh, owned the club for about 15 years now, and uh, so we've seen him um, go from being the host of The Apprentice to being uh, President of the United States. It's very exciting times. So does he still go there on his free time, or he, he, he kind of stay in, this, in, the, in D.C. more often? Um, well, he doesn't come out quite as much as he used to, but um, we still see him quite a bit. Um, it is the club where, in, uh, in here in the United States, in uh, the warm weather in the summer, um, it's the club where he comes and spends his recreational time. Okay, now we're here with the owner of this, this place, this beautiful place that Brazilians are watching today. Gary, what can you tell me, Gary, about this castle? Uh, well, it was built in 1919. Have you ever had any Brazilians getting married here? Yes, uh, Yara, Yara Cavalcante ah. and uh, Philippe. They had a beautiful wedding here in September a few years ago. Two and million dollars. It was a two million yeah. dollar wedding. Yeah. And yes. the nicest people. Yes. Really? Yes. You see, so Brazilians are always welcome, right, Gary? Yeah, especially I got a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we doing now? Now, right now? Right now. We're going in to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have some dinner, right? Right. Everybody's starving. <laughs> That's more important than anything else right now. <laughs> Food. Thank, thank you so much for the invitation. We, no. love, we love your place. Thank you. Thank you. And I hope I came out okay here. You came out beautifully. <laughs> thank you, sir. Not thank a great you. speaker. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>
evento e vou tentar entrevistar mais algumas pessoas durante o evento. Vamos lá comigo? Have you ever been to Brazil? Not yet, but I'm really looking forward to coming down. Oh, how was it, this event with the Star Diamond and the Blue Ocean and the, the well, water? The... This, this entire event and everything it represents is an absolute inspiration, truly. It's cross-cultural, it's forward-looking, progressive, technology is involved. It's, it's an amazing thing. And you did a fantastic job. Well, thank you very much. We love it. <laughs> I'm all about trying to make people feel something special and I hope I achieve just a little bit of that tonight. Brazilian public and everybody at the Star Diamond that's watching you right now. Well, I'll tell you, there there are all different types of implants. You know, there are certain implants that everybody knows. There are certain teeth implants. We have mini implants now, and of course, we have all the things that are connected with aesthetic dentistry, which is cosmetic dentistry. So veneers, crowns, but the big thing is now everything is integrated together. And not only that, we can do it in a week. A week's time. It's amazing. And you know, there's no excuse for not having perfect teeth and perfect smile. All right, now I'm here with Francisco from Nescau 33. What a drink you have. Congratulations. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be in the most prestigious award on earth. And uh, Nescau feels very proud. We start delivering the top premium drink for presidents only, for presidents of Mexico. And now we're starting growing for a while. So it's an honor sharing with you my Brazilian friends. Obrigado. So when is your drink going to land in Brazil? I think by January, February next year. We have a very strong connection with Brazil community. And people have a great taste in Brazil. You know, in the fashion industry, Brazil is top. Also in lifestyle. So we want to be in the hand with Brazil. Uh, with Brazil leadership and uh, social media, all what is happening in Brazil. We want to support also the Carnival of Rio. Sioli. Joe, I know that you have been awarded by the Star Diamond Award. Yeah, we're a coal-fired pizza place that's a five-star, the only five-star Diamond Award given in the whole country, and actually in the whole world, that's five stars. We are gourmet, thin crust, coal-fired pizza. We're at the top of the line. Our ovens are 1,200 degrees. Our pizzas are cooked within a minute, and they're like the best you're gonna have in your entire life. So the Brazilians are coming to New York. They have to stop by at your place. Yes, we're literally right under the Brooklyn Bridge. We're world famous, literally under the Brooklyn Bridge. Okay, now we are here with Anthony Lou. He's the CEO and president for Blue Ocean Capital. So uh, congratulations for, for this event, sir. <laughs> Um, he said he very appreciate tonight because of this event. He feels tonight is one of the best happiness day in, in the US. Congratulations. You are, you, besides being a very powerful man, you, you are very kind. What, what, what would you like to say to the people in Brazil that's watching you right now? Tim Ballard, an ex, uh, external agent uh, 
that he used to work for the U.S. government. And uh, he quit the government and he put together the best dream team ever of ex-Navy SEALs, ex-FBI agents, CIA agents. And they go undercover around the world to rescue children that are kidnapped for sexual exploitation. So now I'm here with Frank Russo. That plays a vital role at JFK. Can you explain to the Brazilian public and to everybody watching you, because we're on YouTube as well, uh, about your role at JFK? So as uh, the board director, I'm responsible for uh, oversight of uh, 1,700 uh, incredible employees who are dedicated to keeping the country safe. And uh, their job is to uh, keep terrorists and uh, instruments of terror out of the country while facilitating legitimate travel and trade. What can you tell me about numbers that uh, visitors that New York receive a year? Last year we processed uh, 16.3 million passengers at JFK. Oh. It's the busiest international airport in the country. And every single passenger has to see at least one officer. So uh, a very critical job for our employees to make sure that everybody who comes into the United States is screened and uh, processed properly. On a, on a busy day in the summer, we'll see 57,000 passengers a day. I'm a global entry. That system is fantastic. I mean, I, mean, I take about a minute to scan my passport and retrieve a paper, show to the officer, get my luggage and go home. Do you encourage people to use that system? Leo, it's so great that you mentioned it. It, it is uh, one of our best business transformation initiatives. As, as more and more people come into the country, we want to enroll more and more people in global entry because uh, our ability to find that needle in the haystack is much easier when we know that we have trusted travelers who are using the global entry program. Uh, the program is expanding and we're doing a great job with it, but we want more and more people in it. Well, I'm from Brazil and a lot of Brazilians visit New York and some of them are sent to the secondary. And they ask me, Leo, but why did I go to the secondary? I, all my paperwork are, are good. My passport is good. And I tell them, it's not, it's not something, it's not personal. It's, it's about the, the documentation. And I tell them now, uh, the United States is investigating every single thing, Instagram, Facebook, to see the real intention of these visitors. Can you say anything about this kind of uh, screening? Yes, Leo, and you're exactly right. They shouldn't be offended. It's, it's, it's not personal. Um, what they should know is that for the 16.3 million passengers that came into the United States, every single one of those exams is recorded in our system. And so for our officers, they know that if they process somebody who, for some reason, does something wrong, kills a cop, kills a civilian, or even worse, uh, attempts a, you know, a terrorist attack on our country, we can track the officer who processed that passenger. And so our officers know that they have to be right 100% of the time. And so from time to time, they will send someone in for a referral just to double check. And that's what you're seeing. Tell me, New York is a permanent target. Do you follow with this, with this conclusion? Leo, uh, the, the best story I can tell about New York being a target is uh, the story of the first attack on the World Trade Center by uh, Ramzi Youssef. Uh, after his attack on the World Trade Center in uh, February of 1993, he flew back to Pakistan and uh, when, when we eventually caught up with him and flew him back to the United States, uh, he, they flew him over the Trade Center and he had a hood over his head. But they pulled the hood over his head and they said, look, the World Trade Center is still up. And Ramsey Youssef said, not for long. And, you know, that's what we always know is the case when it comes to New York. We're always going to be a threat. It's always going to be a target for terrorists. And we always have to be on guard. Thank you for talking to Brazil, sir. It was a pleasure talking to you. We're going to go. Touch it, stroke it, and undress it. I can see every part, nothing.